If you like cars, and in particular appreciate styling, this 1971 Charger has to grab you. And the SE version, meaning special edition, is the top of the line. At least it better be, it carries a whale of a window sticker. Our tester ran well over the $5,000 mark. Automatic headlight washers were on the list of every conceivable option. Overall handling was improved by these G6015 Goodyear polyglass tires. In the muscle compartment, we had it all. The 440 cubic inch V8 delivering 370 horsepower at 4,600 RPMs. This one had all the quick sounds. On our first run, we had 30 miles an hour in 2.4 seconds. Second run felt even better. When we buried our foot in all those Mopar goodies, we rang the bell on 50 in 4.4 seconds. With that wide rubber hot, the dig was better. And the slapstick automatic shifter enabled us to run the RPM to around 5,500, which we found to be our best shift point. 70 miles an hour came eight seconds after we left the line. The braking department is not the strongest port on a charger. From 30, it took 34 feet. But then you can almost equal that by dragging your foot. It was the panic stop that left a lot to be desired. This 50 mile an hour stop scraped rubber for 105 feet. The pedal faded noticeably, and you could smell them all over the racetrack. We ended the forward motion on this 70 mile an hour stop in 212 feet. Rear axle hop was wild. Heat filled up intense. Pedal fade almost to the floor. What our car lacked in the braking department, it more than made up for in overall performance and handling. Our highway evaluations showed the SE to be a most able and comfortable car. Fuel consumption took it right out of any imaginable economy bracket with eight to 10 miles per gallon, depending on the type of driver. Some automotive experts have tested this model charger. They stated that the car has massive understeer, plows through the turns, and from a handling standpoint was anything but graceful. We did not find this to be true, but then driver skill could understandably make the difference. Granted, the car doesn't negotiate corners in the same manner as a Ferrari, but taking the vehicle for what it is, a 4,000 pound five passenger sedan, you'd have to agree from this film that the car is a better than average performer by far. Through the pylon course, we noticed that body lean was a little excessive. However, it was not noticeable on the inside. Under the front end, Dodge employs independent, unequal length control arms, torsion bars, and an anti-sway bar. In the rear, a rigid axle, semi-elliptic leaf springs, and another anti-sway bar. This heavy-duty suspension, plus the wide oval tires, made for good rebound and recovery. The driving position in this new Charger showed a marked improvement over past models. They apparently repositioned the steering wheel or raised the seats, possibly both. At least this year's car seemed far more comfortable. And speaking of the steering wheel, it was small, cushioned, and leather covered, enabling a good non-slip grip. The wheelbase on this 71 offering was reduced by two inches, the overall length by three. And while the car has two or three more inches of width on the interior, it actually feels smaller from the driver's seat. I hope I don't have to explain this, because I can't. A few weeks ago, we tested another Charger with a 318 cubic inch engine and standard suspension. The difference was vast, to say the least. And even in this era of high insurance premiums and the fading supercar, we believe that the power and the handling ability of a performance car are the same ingredients for a safer car.